Good morning, Ms. Manning. Swear for the testimony that you give in this proceeding for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. You begin by identifying yourself, your capacity on behalf of Jackson County and your office location. Certainly. My name is Kelly Manning. I'm the Development Services Director here at Jackson County at 10 South Oakdale, Medford, Oregon, 975. Four oh one. Very good. Seven five oh one. Okay. You can proceed. Thank you. Um, and I'm just gonna make this very, very brief. I'm only responding to Mr. O'Connor's, I guess, question in terms of why the county issued the citation that we did. I don't know necessarily that I would agree with Mr. O'Connor that the stipulated judgment that was signed by Jackson County and, um, and Mr. O'Connor is a land use decision. But I will say that the stipulated order was based upon the hearings officer's decision that was prior to the Land Use Board of Appeals remand. And the reason that the county issued the citation that we did was because the remand, because the decision was remanded back, our hearings officer's decision, for which the stipulated judgment was based. Um, and so at this point, in Jackson County's opinion, um, there is no land use approval for an asphalt batch plant on that site. to make sure I understand this, this correctly. I do recall the brief instance where I was requested to sign the stipulated order that had obviously been tendered by both Mr. O'Connor and County Council. Okay. And that was subsequent to a, to a decision by my colleague, Mr. Rubenstein, that went to the Land Use Board of Appeals. Is that, is that accurate? That is accurate. Okay. And uh, Mr. Rubenstein's decision was, was subsequently affirmed in part and remanded in part. Yes. But the sum total of that proceeding from the county's perspective is that there is yet to be a final approval of, of the Myers non-conforming use on that property? That's correct. So from the county's perspective, do, does the county believe that the Myers have the potential to gain approval of a non-conforming use? And they just haven't done so? Yes, I would say that's accurate at this point. So there's a process that yet the, the county believes is, is necessary in order to, in effect, document that non-conforming use status. Yes, and, and that is the initiation of the remand, which, like Mr. O'Connor said, took place. They initiated the remand on uh, July 31st. And so there'll be a remand hearing and the following decision and then due process. Do you have anything else for me? I don't. Mr. O'Connor, do you have any matters that you'd like to address with Ms. Manning regarding the statements that she has just made? No, and just, uh, you know, in terms of stick with order, I mean, I believe it, it is a land use decision. It's not like when the, the readings that you give at the uh, beginning of the proceedings, you know, you move it, it's got findings of law and, and so on. But otherwise, no. So it sounds to me like it's a relatively straightforward interpretational question about what is left to be accomplished by, by the Myers and the county to finally, yes, recognize, that's the right word, uh, lack of any better word, uh, the, the, the right of the asphalt plant to continue its existence as a non use. Is that an accurate statement, Mr. O'Connor? Partially. What's, what's wrong? It's our position, okay, is this, is that there was the hearings officer's decision and subsequent to that, there was this stipulated order which constituted a separate land use decision. In terms of 
marketability of the property and continue you know, you to a certain extent. Yes, we need to stay involved in the process uh, and we're more than willing, have been more than willing and continue to spend the money and to take the time to get all the noticed type approvals. But also is that that stipulated order, it's a land use decision and as I stated, the other parties to this proceeding had noticed and declared it to be a land use decision, but took no action to appeal that stipulated order being the land use decision to the circuit court or to the land use board of appeals. So an alternate argument of ours is we have our land use approval in terms of the stipulated order. We are still going along because with the, uh, with the remand proceedings, because we're confident that we will prevail on that also, but that is our position. So is Manning or Ross or Miller, either one of you, Ross Miller, why don't you come up, just make sure that you're part of this process. You're technically representing Manning, okay. So the, the two of you have had the opportunity to hear Mr. O'Connor's remarks in that respect. I'm fine if both of you need to address me, but it, I guess it might be helpful to kind of make sure that we have an adequate response from Jackson County in response to Mr. O'Connor's characterization of the status of this. Um, from Jackson County's perspective, the stipulated order was never meant to be a land use decision binding or approving a non-conforming use verification. We would not consider it, and. I think the, the argument is interesting and I'd like our council to look at it, um, but I guess in this case, you are our council and looking at it and making the, making this um, code decision. Um, but I will say that um, it was never the intent of the stipulated order to approve the non-conforming non use verification via that process. It was simply an effort on both parties' part to gain compliance with the hearings officer's decision. Okay. And only that. Okay. Um, while, any, anything, Officer Miller? Well, I'd like to say that, you know, and this is not a land use decision either. We could have here if we wanted to, we could have binding, but it would not be a land use decision. Alright. Now, just for the record, so everybody in the in the room understands, well I'm a lawyer, I'm I act as a hearing officer and it's my my role is to be independent. County legal counsel can certainly offer its position and its um, and legal advice and county council can offer that both to um, administrative staff, including people like Ms. Manning and Officer Miller, but also has the ability to provide um, consultation with the hearings officers. Uh, whether the county chooses to do that, that's obviously up to, to the two of you, and whether uh, we either Mr. Rubenstein or I feel it's necessary, we have an independent right to, to ask um, council to do that. Um, in light of the fact that council participated in the stipulated order, I'll be careful about how we address that issue um, because it, kind of, it could potentially put council in a bit of an awkward position as both a, uh, as advisor to the county, the hearings officer, as well as apparently participant in the creation of the document, so I'll be very careful about that. Um, does the county have anything further? Nothing further. Yeah. All right. Um, Mr. O'Connor, do you have anything further well, in the way of a summation or statements? And let me ask you both this. You've got a whole bunch of people here. In light of the fact that this may or may not be a proceeding that could be subject to chapter 197 of the Oregon Revised Statutes. Are there people here that want to address the, the hearings officer? 
there's one hand that's already gone up. And the question is, is whether it would be appropriate for potentially interested parties, parties to, to be involved in this. Um, so, Mr. Connor, if you want to address that issue now, I'll, I'll allow you, but anything else? Okay. Well, well, First, maybe you can address what. Yes, and I think uh, Ms. Manning's assessment of the stipulated order is a fair assessment. When we were entering into negotiating and coming to the conclusion of order, it was not, you know, our intent or the party's intent as to say, oh, this is a new separate land use decision. That's a fair assessment. That was not where the issue has come up is by, and I, I hate to say rogue advocates because I'm not on the various appeals that are, that are representing the different parties in Mountain View Estates. It is the attorneys for rogue advocates and Mountain View Estates are the ones that made the, you know, brought up the issue. That was a land use decision. The stipulated order was a land use decision. Based on that position, our position changed. It's like, okay, I mean, if that's their classification of that stipulated order as an inappropriate land use decision, but they took no action to appeal it, fine, we'll go with that. We'll, we'll accept that position. So I just want to, Ms. Manning's assessment was perfectly correct. It was the parties coming together, you know, implementing the hearing officer order pursuant to the stipulated order. As to having other people testify, our position, this is code enforcement, we're the parties, this isn't a land use hearing, and other parties should not be allowed to participate in this proceeding unless there were a witness called by either the county or ourselves. With respect to the issue that Mr. O'Connor addressed last, does the county agree with that? In an adversarial contested case type proceeding right now, other folks that, who are not called as specifically by one party or the other as witnesses, do they have any right to participate? I don't think they do, but. You know, I, I would say that I would leave that up to you. Um, when it's, it's interesting when I talked with Officer Miller about this case, because I was interviewed by the media, I asked, I don't participate in a lot of these and I don't attend a lot of these. And I asked, you know, is this, our, is the public allowed to speak? And he said, well, it depends on whether the hearings officer allows it, um, but it isn't a public hearing. And um, that being said, uh, I would leave that up to you, but I would say under normal, under the normal course of action, at least from what Ms. Mr. Miller said, it didn't appear that that was how the hearings operated. Well, it, it's a public hearing, but it's not open to public participation like a land use hearing. Right, and that's, I, I, that's the vernacular I was uh, using. Right. Um, For the sake of the record, are there individuals who would like to address the hearings officer in connection with this matter? One individual is raising his hand. Sir, could you come forward? Would you state your name and give your uh, address, please? Uh, Steve Rouse, uh, I'm the president of Rogue Advocates. Address is uh, North Alpha Gate Road, Joshua Lord. Sir, I need you to tell me on what basis you believe that an individual who has not been requested to testify in this kind of a contested case proceeding would have the legal right to offer testimony. Rogue Advocates was the appellant for the hearings officer's decision. We have standing as a party. That stipulated agreement was based on the hearings officer's decision, which is what we appealed from Zuba. And I think we can provide some insights that the county has not yet provided as to the facts of the case. 
Well, that was not, with all due respect, and I appreciate what you're saying, I don't, that wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Um, so at, at this point, I'm, I'm reluctant to, uh, to open the proceeding up to any additional testimony. If somebody would like to offer legal authority to me why they think that I should allow that, I, I, I might consider it. But, um, but otherwise, again, I think that unless someone is, is called as a witness by one side or the other, this is, again, this is in, a, in the form of a, uh, of a contested case type proceeding. So I think uh, the, there is not a, generally speaking, the same right of, um, of the public to participate in the process as if it were, strictly speaking, a, um, a matter subject to um, the provisions of um, Chapter 197 and the Oregon Revised Statutes. Um, sometimes it gets a little bit murky because there are things that can occur that, in hindsight, do become land use decisions. I don't know whether this is or not. I, obviously, I haven't had a chance to look at that yet. And that may so if, my, if the assessment turns out that I'm looking at, at land use decisions or making land use decisions, then it's, I guess it does run the potential that, that excluding public testimony might become a problem, but I don't know that there's anything I can do about that at the, at the present time. So, okay. Um, to give the county one last opportunity to address the hearings officer and any other matters if it believes it's necessary. Uh, I'd just like to say this is um, just like you to acknowledge that at the date of citation, there was no approval for an asphalt plant on the day of citation. And my only um, uh, request is that it be a full fine and cease operation within 30 days of the hearings officer's order. Cease task force. Okay. Any final arguments, summation, Mr. O'Connor? Yeah, it's, there is a stipulated order. There's been no alleged violation of the stipulated order, meaning to allow the county just to enter into pleas and just randomly violate them on their prerogative would defeat the purpose of a stipulated order and a plea in the first place. We're in the process, we're in the land use process, we've always been in the land use process, uh, and there's no basis for this citation and should be dismissed because there's already a stipulated order in place. And that's our position. Okay. Thank you. Technically speaking, the county probably has a final rebuttal if it wants to. No. Uh, Officer Miller says it's declining. Okay, um, obviously there's a, a few complexities here that are going to require me to, to look at, at the record and, um, and give this some further consideration. So I will um, I'll do that and get a decision to folks as promptly as I can. Um, so unless there's anything else, uh, I guess we'll go off the record then.